What's up, extreme kids of Ottawa and around the world? This is First Lady Kay, and welcome to our midweek story time where we are reading the Bible storybook by Veggie Tales. This week's story is called An Easter Carol. Isn't this fun that we get to celebrate Easter and Christmas all year round because we know Jesus? What a wonderful opportunity. Let's get started. Hey there, says Larry. I was shopping the other day getting ready for Easter. I bought the biggest Easter basket I could find and I got 182, that's a huge number boys and girls, multicolored plastic eggs to fill with jelly beans and marshmallow chickens. Now boys and girls, I'm going to ask you, can you count up to 182? If you can, be sure to videotape yourself and send it to ottawachurchkids at gmail.com for a special prize in the mail. Also, can you remember First Lady Kay's nickname at Extreme Kids? If you can, be sure to add it into your video of counting to 182 for your special prize at ottawachurchkids at gmail.com. Let's continue. And Larry says, and I got eight bags of green grass and four bags of purple. I was very excited until Bob told me that maybe I wasn't paying attention to the real meaning of Easter. He suggested I read a story called An Easter Carol. Hmm, let's see what it says. An Easter Carol. While Edmund and his dad prepared St. Bart's Church for Easter, Ebenezer Nezer was hard at work making Easter eggs in his factory. Ah, the satisfying fatigue of productivity. Ebenezer chuckled. Ho, 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 ho. Everyone begged Ebenezer to close the factory for Easter, but Ebenezer had another plan. He was going to destroy St. Bart's and build a place called Easterland. At midnight on Easter Eve, Ebenezer was fast asleep. Whack! Suddenly, he was awakened by a tiny angel named Hope. Hope whisked him away, and before he knew what happened, Ebenezer was flying through the air whoosh, towards St. Bart's Church. Inside, he saw a little boy sitting next to his grandmother. That's you, said Hope. This is Easter past. Before they left the church, Ebenezer saw the sunlight pouring through the stained glass window that showed the birth of Jesus. A few minutes later, Ebenezer was watching himself as a grown-up. This is Easter present, said Hope. They saw little Edmund, who was very sick. Mr. Nezer isn't a bad man, Edmund told his father. He just doesn't have something that we have, the thing that lets us celebrate Easter all year long. Ebenezer still didn't understand. Back at St. Bart's Church, Hope tried one more time to explain the true meaning of Easter. She used the stained glass window to show Ebenezer the story of Jesus as she sang. A baby was born on a dark starry night. Some followed the star to see the great sight. The Years hurried by and the boy, now a man, could make the blind see with the touch of his hand. <gasps> he hated injustice. He taught what was right. He said, I'm the way and the truth and the light. His friends soon believed that he was the one, the Savior, the Messiah, in fact, God's own son. But others, they doubted, they did not agree, so they took him. They tried him. He died on a tree. There is nothing to fear, nothing heaven knows. He died for us to give us life and to give us hope. He 
Rose. Crash! Oh, no! His song and his poem had come to a quick end. Oh, Hope's song came to a crashing end as the wrecking ball smashed through the first window of the church. Ebenezer woke from his sleep. (gasps) Wait! Ebenezer yelled as he ran down the street, through the door and up the aisle of St. Bart's Church. I was wrong. Easter isn't about plastic eggs. It's all about hope that this life isn't all there is. Well, Edmund smiled up at Mr. Nesser, who was promised to use the money he saved for Easterland to help him make sorry, to help make him well. That is wonderful, boys and girls. Now, boys and girls, Sister K did not sing the whole song. So if you can sing the whole song that I read from this story and videotape yourself singing it, be sure to email us at ottawachurchkids at gmail.com for your special prize. Let us continue. This is what our tiny little angel says. Hope. It's really easy to forget while we're even celebrating Easter. God sent his son Jesus to forgive our sins and offer us hope for a life forever with him. That's not something we want to forget. So let's take a look at the real Easter story. We're going to read Jesus is Risen in the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 1 to 10. Here we go. It was very early in the morning. On the first day of the week, the women took the spices they had prepared. Then they went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from it. When they entered the tomb, they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. They were wondering about this. Suddenly, two men in clothes as bright as lightning stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed down with their faces to the ground. Then the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? Jesus isn't here, silly. He has risen. Remember how he told you he would rise? It was while he was still with you in Galilee. He said, the son of man must be handed over to sinful people. He must be nailed to a cross. But on the third day, he will rise from the dead. Then the women remembered Jesus' words. They came back from the tomb. They told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and all the others with them were the ones who told the apostles. Wow, I wish I was one of those people. Don't you extreme kids? Let's hear what Bob and Larry have to say. Wow, it's good to be reminded of what's really important. I mean, I like my yellow and pink spotted malted milk balls, my fuzzy yellow squeak chicks, and my white furry furry, my white furry Easter rabbit. But They don't mean near as much to me as Jesus. Amen. Jesus is what Easter is all about. So just remember, extreme kids, it's okay to enjoy the plastic eggs and baskets. I hope you remember the real reason we celebrate Easter every year too. In fact, Easter is one of the reasons we know that. (gasps) Do you know what I'm going to say, Extreme Kids? Right. God made you special and he loves you so very much. And who else loves you? That's right. First Lady K and all your Extreme Kids staff. Let's do our memory verse for today. Some of you might have already memorized it. It's a very popular one. It's John 3.16. It says, God loved the world so much that he gave his one 
and only Son. Anyone who believes in him will not die, but will have eternal life. <gasps> That's a long one, but so good. Let's do it again, boys and girls. God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only Son. Anyone who believes in him will not die, but will have eternal life. Oh, you extreme kids are so super smart. I know that you are going to be able to memorize this and email us at ottawachurchkids at gmail.com. Let's do it one last time. God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son. Anyone who believes in him will not die, but will have eternal life. Wow, Extreme Kids, you're so smart. I can't wait to hear from you at OttawaChurchKids at gmail.com. This is First Lady K saying God loves you and he made you so special. I love you. Thanks for being with us this week at your midweek story time. And we look forward to seeing and hearing from you next week too. Mwah!